Metal Gear Solid, like most of Hideo Kojima's work, is packed to the brim with little details and secrets. The more you play, the more you find out about it. That is why today I'll show you 10 things I bet you didn't know about Metal Gear Solid. But before starting, I have to warn you that this video contains major spoilers for the 25-year-old game and its sequel. So if you haven't played them, be warned. With that out of the way, let's begin with number 1, Sniper Wolf. Remember when Sniper Wolf shoots Snake right before her second boss fight? You can actually see her hiding in the snowfield before that. After leaving the tower, don't move ahead and instead use the Nikita missile launcher to launch a missile. You can take the missile all the way over to the other end and find her lying there waiting for Snake. Unfortunately, you can't damage her at this point though, but it's a pretty neat detail. By the way, if you didn't know, you can actually use the Nikita missile launcher in this boss fight too, and it's pretty effective. Number 2. Parachute While we're here at the snowfield, let's talk about another cool thing. After beating Sniper Wolf, come to this area at southeast of the snowfield. If you use the first person camera to look around, you can find the parachute that Liquid used to survive the hind crash. And you also get this codec call. Colonel, listen to me. I found a parachute near the wreckage of the hind. A parachute? You don't think that Liquid survived? Impossible. As soon as he jumped out of the pilot's seat, he'd be sliced up faster than an onion on an infomercial. So what's that parachute doing there then? I have no idea. A trap? Either that, or a message. To me. Meaning I'm not dead, I suppose. Maybe. But I think it's more like I'll string you up. Well, in any case, don't let your guard down. I won't. Pretty cool, huh? Number 3. Slow Snake So you probably remember this conversation with the Colonel at the beginning of the game. It's Snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. Excellent, Snake. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. What you probably didn't know is that this conversation can be different. If you take a long time, and I mean a really long time, to get to the elevator in the first area of the game, you'll get this conversation instead. It's Snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. That took a long time. I guess you're feeling a little rusty. Don't worry. It's been a while, but it's all coming back to me. I guess Snake kept him waiting, huh? Number 4. Meeting Meryl without the SOCOM Continuing with alternative sequences, let's talk about this cutscene with Meryl. Most people have acquired the SOCOM pistol by this point in the game, so this is the cutscene that plays in that case. So you killed the Chief, you bastard! Liquid? No, you're not. Don't move! Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? Your hands are shaking. <sighs> Can you shoot me, rookie? Careful. I'm no rookie. Liar. That nervous glance. That scared look in your eyes. They're rookie's eyes if I ever saw them. You've never shot a person, am I right? You talk too much. You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. I told you I'm no rookie! You're not one of them, are you? Open that door. You've got a car, don't you? Why? So we can get the hell out of here! Looks like we'll be a little delayed. What are you doing? Don't think! Shoot! But, have you ever wondered what happens if you don't get the SOCOM pistol before this cutscene? Well, as it turns out, you'll get a slightly different cutscene that even has different music. Don't move! <sighs> so you killed the Chief, you bastard! Liquid? No, you're not. Don't move! Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? Your hands are shaking. <sighs> Can you shoot me, rookie? Careful. I'm no rookie. Liar. That nervous glance. 
That scared look in your eyes. They're rookies' eyes if I ever saw them. You've never shot a person, am I right? You talk too much. You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. I told you I'm no rookie! You're not one of them, are you? Open that door. You've got a car, don't you? Why? So we can get the hell out of here! Looks like we'll be a little delayed. What are you doing? Don't think! Shoot! Number 5. Ocelot's Disappointment Another alternative sequence happens after the boss fight against Ocelot. Normally, this is what you would see after beating it the first time. You're pretty good. Just what I'd expect from the man with the same code as the boss. It's been a long time since I had such a good fight. But I'm just getting warmed up. What? My hand! However, if you die a few times during this fight, you'll get this cutscene instead. I'm disappointed. You're no match for the boss. Playtime's over, friend. You're not cut out for war. Don't worry. I'll kill you quickly. What? I find it interesting that they changed the scream as well. Not sure what's the reason for that change. Number 6. Running silently on noisy floors. Here's a gameplay tip that can help you finish the game faster for those higher completion ranks. Normally, when you run on top of noisy floors, your footsteps make noise and you can get spotted if you get close to a guard. But, if you quickly equip and unequip a weapon with the R1 button, you can run on these floors without making noise. That's because Snake's walking animation resets every time you equip or unequip a weapon. It's a pretty useful trick. Number 7. Defeating Liquid in one combo. Having trouble with the fist fight against Liquid? It turns out you can actually beat him with just one long string of punches. It requires precise timing, but with enough practice you can get the right rhythm and finish him off in one long sequence. But even if you drop the sequence before beating him, you'll still deal a lot of damage at once. This is a technique used by speedrunners to quickly get through this fight. Number 8. Pissed Cardboard Box Here's another trick that's pretty cool and useful. After defeating Psycho Mantis, Snake and Meryl reach this underground cave filled with woes. And these woes can be a pain in the ass to get through. But when you reach the end of the cave, if you hit Meryl and quickly equip a cardboard box, a wolf will pee on it. That's neat and all, but if you use that box when you come through this area later, the wolves will leave you alone. Finally, some peace. Number 9. Meryl's Sneaking Suit Most people are aware of the fact that after completing the game twice, when you start a new game on that same save file, Snake will be wearing a tuxedo. And the Cyborg Ninja will have a different color scheme. But what most people don't know is that, exclusively on the Japanese Integral Edition of the game, Meryl also has a different outfit on a third playthrough. And it's a sneaking suit very similar to the one Snake wears normally. It looks very nice and she even wears a bandana. Although this one cutscene where she talks about her tattoo doesn't look right anymore. What's that mark? Huh? Oh, this? It's a paint tattoo. It's not real. I was a fan of Foxhound way back. Number 10. Different post-credits audio. If you have finished the game at least once, you've probably seen the post-credits sequence that reveals a few more details about the plot. But what most people don't realize is that there are two versions of this sequence that contain different amounts of information. Let's listen to both, shall we? Here's the version that plays when you submit to the torture and get the Otacon ending. Yes, sir. The entire unit was wiped out. Those two are still alive. The Vector? Yes, sir. Fox die should become activated soon. Right on schedule. Yes, sir. I recovered all of Rex's dummy warhead data. No, sir. My cover is intact. Nobody knows who I really am. Yes. 
Yes, the DARPA chief knew my identity, but he's been disposed of. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Mr. President. And here's the version that plays when you don't submit the torture and get the Merrill ending. Yes, sir. The entire unit was wiped out. Those two are still alive. The Vector? Yes, sir. Fox die should become activated soon. Right on schedule. Yes, sir. I recovered all of Rex's dummy warhead data. No, sir. My cover is intact. Nobody knows who I really am. Yes, the DARPA chief knew my identity, but he's been disposed of. Yes, the inferior one was the winner after all. That's right. Until the very end, Liquid thought he was the inferior one. Yes, sir, I agree completely. It takes a well-bounced individual such as yourself to rule the world. No, sir. No one knows that you were the third one, Solidus. What should I do about the woman? Yes, sir. I'll keep her under surveillance. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. President. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Clearly the second option is the true ending. It even talks about the president being solid as snake way before MGS2 introduced him. So there you have it. If you're interested in taking a look at these details yourself, the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 is coming out later this month. And I'll certainly be reviewing the PC version of the Master Collection to find out if it beats emulation. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. And if you want to get in touch with me, follow me on X. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Special Operations Foxhound. Revolver Ocelot. <laughs>